Hi everyone and welcome back to my series on how to make an action RPG in Godot 4. Godot 4.1 has just been released, so this is the version I'm working with now. Everything should work just fine in this new version, but please remember always to use some sort of version control or backup system before you move your project to 4.1. And now let's get started. In this episode, we'll start looking at how to create collectible items. But let's first make a small change to our code from the last episode. Last time, we created this enemy collisions array to keep track of the enemies the player is colliding with at any given time. I have since then found another way of doing this that I think is smarter when we use Godot. First we need to create a variable to access the player's hurt box from the script. Down in the physics process function, we then call the function get overlapping arrays on the hurt box to get all the areas the hurt box is currently colliding with. I also change the enemy area to just area and check if the area's name is hitbox before calling the hurt by enemy function. This replaces the need for the enemy collisions array we made previously. And we can then also remove the code from both the on hurtbox array entered and exited functions. Finally, we run the game to test that everything is still working correctly. Okay, now let's start creating an item we can pick up. First, we create a new scene with an area 2D as the root node. And add a collision shape and set the shape to be a rectangle. And then also add a sprite 2D, rename the root node collectible, and attach a new script to it. And finally, let's save this new scene. We are not actually going to be instantiating this scene. Instead, we will inherit from it when we create collectible items. But all the items won't have the same shape. So it's important that we make the shape of the collision shape 2D local to each scene. To do this, we click to select the collision shape 2D node, then click where it says rectangle shape 2D, open the resource properties and enable local to scene and then make sure to save the scene again. To create a scene for our first collectible item, let's now create a new inherited scene and choose our collectible scene as the base scene. Let's make the first collectible item a life part. The first thing we need is a sprite for it. If you're using the Ninja Adventure Asset Pack like me, then this can be found under Items and then Potions. Let's import the sprite into Godot. And then add it as the texture on the sprite in our new inherited scene. Let's then also rename the scene and resize the collision shape so it matches the sprite and then save the scene. There are a few ways we can add the life part to our world. One is by dragging it into the world scene as we did with the enemies. But for a tile based game like this, we can also add scenes to the tile set and then add them to our tile map. This can help keep the world scene less cluttered and also make it easier 
to place items correctly when we create our levels. Click to select the tile map and then open the tile set menu at the bottom of the screen. Over in the tiles menu, we then click at the plus sign and select scene collection. Let's name this collection collectibles. Now locate the life path in the file system menu and click and drag it into our new collection. Before we add the new life path tile to our tile mat, let's first create a new layer and call it collectibles. Now in the tile map menu, select the new layer and start adding life paths to the game. So now we have added a few life paths, but nothing happens when we walk over them. Let's start by making them disappear when the player walks into them. Go to the collectible script and create a new function called collect. And from this function, we then call the Godot function QFree. Now we need to call this function when the player collides with the collectible. So go to the player script and in the unheard box area entered function, we first check if the area has the collect method and then call it if this is the case. When we test again, we can now see that the life paths disappear when the player walks into them. We have just created the foundation for our first collectible item. But I know a lot of you out there also want our little ninja to attack these slimes at some point. So let's also add a collectible sword. Like with the life pot, we create a scene that inherits from collectible. And then we add a sword texture to our sprite. Adjust the collision shape. and rename the root. We save the scene and add it to our collectibles collection in the tile set and then place it using the tile map. And now our player can collect a sword. But wait, wouldn't it be fun if we played a little animation when the sword is collected. I'm quickly adding an animation player to the sword scene and then I'll create a spin animation using the sprite's rotation property. At the moment, both the life part and the sword is using the collectible script. But now we want to add code to our sword that the life pod shouldn't use. However, we still also want the behavior of the collectible script. So we detach the collectible script from the sword and create a new script instead. To make sure it still inherits from collectible, we make it extend from the collectible script instead of directly from area 2D. We can click and drag the path into our script. Okay, now we have our new sort script. Let's add a reference to the animation player and then add a collect function. Now, when collect is called, we play the spin animation. Then we wait till the animation is done playing and then we call super.collect. This will call the collect function on the base script. Let's test again and see what happens. Now the sword spins before it is freed. And that's it for this episode. I have left links in the description to this video 
For those of you who want to learn more about inheritance and using scenes as tiles in Godot. Next time, we'll start working on a simple inventory system. Bye!